Okay, so here we are where we left off with the previous animation of the bottles floating. Uh, I realize we have been taking a very long time uh, working on these, and part of that is that I just, you know, when I run into an error, I can only assume that you are going to be running into some of the same an errors. Uh, I've been using Blender for a very long time, and I know many of you are probably just getting started, so uh, I'm not afraid to let these run a little bit long just to make sure all the information is on the table. That being said, for this last animation, it's a little bit more simple. And um, as you can see, you know, we're using many of the same tools for any of these animations and you can come up with, um, you know, an infinite, num infinite number of possibilities for your own animations. So um, with this last one, I'm just going to try to kind of move through it. Obviously, I'll still talk you through what I'm doing and my thoughts behind it. But let's go ahead and get started with that last animation, which is actually the opening animation in uh, what ended up being my final. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, where we make a new scene. But I think for that scene, I want to actually use the uh, original flip out scene we used. So that's got those three bottles all nice and flat. And it's just it's just in a better position, I think, to start. So what I'll do is press the button up here to make a new scene, and we'll do that again as a full copy. And you can name that whatever you want, but I'm gonna name it, uh, I'm just gonna name open because it was my scene opener. Um, so with that, you can see we've now got a third scene set up. And what we can do is let's just pull this to a frame we like, and then press A to select everything. A up here in the graph editor, and I'm going to press X to delete keyframes, just to basically remove all animation from this scene. But you can see if we go back to our original, the animation's all still there. So good to double check that. Uh, not a bad idea to save your file. I'm going to save this as shot three and overwrite the last one where it crashed when I accidentally did the lamp thing once again. So I'm going to try not to click the lamp thing this time. I think it may have something to do with OBS which is what I'm using to record these videos. Um, that's my best guess, but I could also probably Google and see what it is. So anyway, so we've got the three bottles there. I just want to lay them all flat down on the ground. I'm going to press Alt-R on this back one to reset the rotation. And then I can select all three of these. And then um, if we tried to rotate them all together now, that would not work. But you can press period on your keyboard and do individual origins. And then I'm going to do R, X, and then I'll rotate them all on their own axes. And now I can move them all down until they're just touching the ground, GZ, and pull them to right about there. Just I'm, I'm just looking until they poke through, and then I pull it up a little bit, and now I know it's sitting on the ground. So we are in good shape with those. Let's just go ahead and kind of get them into that arrangement that I had done. So we'll, um, we'll leave that one like this, and then maybe these ones can rotate, and then these can rotate this way. Something like that I think is semi-interesting, but of course, do as you please. Let's move these all back. And then I just need to set up kind of that ledge. So this, this shot is a little bit more simple. Uh, we can actually use one of these cubes. Let's delete the other one. Uh, we can use this cube uh, to create the ledge. So let's just press Alt-R to reset that rotation, and then maybe move this over. And then I'm just going to start dragging this shape out. So GY, GZ, and I'm just kind of trying to create sort of like a cliff. You know, it's almost like this story here is like the cube is like, it's higher than the bottles. It's peering down on them. It has yet to be deleted. It's standing tall and proud. Um, so yeah, that'll be sort of basically what I'm going for. And then we might as well go ahead and uh, let's just snap our cursor to select it on that face. Shift A, mesh, cube. And then so that I can get the origin on the bottom, I'm going to go into edit mode, bring that up. And then we can just scale this down. And that's going to go, I'm pressing G and Shift Z to uh, constrain it to that surface, basically. Um, so something like that I think is sort of what I went for. Uh, the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and get this camera set up into the orientation we like. And that's really all we're going to animate as well. Of course, you could move these bottles around as much as you please. But uh, for me, I'm just going to really just animate the camera moving. So let's get this into a nice position we like. Now, I do think that just so that I could have it be seem a little more like spying, prying. I wanted to use a longer focal length so it looked like you were really looking, 
you know, like down this cliff or something at the bottles. Um, so now what I'll do over here where I'm looking through the camera, I'm going to press shift tilde and that will allow me to enter a sort of a fly mode. And then you can control that almost like you would uh, if you're playing like a first person shooter game or something like that with W, A, S, and D. And then um, you can slow how fast you're zooming in and out by scrolling up and down on your mouse wheel. And you'll actually see all those commands written across the bottom of the screen when you're in that command. And again, that's shift tilde. So something like that I think is okay. Um, you know, maybe we wanna, let's move these all back over, or I guess I could move this over. So I want that, this bottle to be not fully revealed. Uh, this one though, obviously I wanna get a good look at, and then maybe we just have kind of a hint of that other bottle over there. So setting the shot up, something like that. And then let's see. So yeah, I'm looking over here. I'm gonna see kind of, we're just gonna be moving along the X axis and that's gonna give me most of the look I want. And maybe we don't need to see the entire bottom of this bottle so we can pull it up a little bit. So I think something like that. That's really all we're going to be doing there. Now I don't want to see this front edge of the ledge, so I'm just going to move this out on the y-axis so we're clean and clear there. Now let's go ahead and see what we want that last shot to look like. And I think that's kind of what we have here with uh, with this, this framed shot. So maybe it ends right around there. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe for the X location. And then all we're going to do is slide over a little bit for the intro here. Basically the thought here was that I just wanted to create kind of a nice clean slate where I could lay on my title card, some text, something like that. Uh, you may want to do something similar. Um, so that was kind of the thought behind just starting on that gray backdrop and then moving over to um, kind of have our first peek at the, at the bottle and label design. So something like that, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press T up here to set this to a linear animation. So we just have that nice slow pan. And this cube isn't quite in view, so let's kind of move that over. Again, all preference here, but I kind of liked when you know this corner was just a little bit poking over the edge. I thought that looked kind of cool. So that's a pretty decent setup shot. You know, we'll be able to open the scene on maybe just a flat gray, kind of fade into this, have our title card, and then very quickly, you know, as people read um, that intro, uh, they'll start to see the bottles and kind of the, the story begins, if you will. So very simple shot here. Next thing I wanna do is just go ahead and set up a little bit of lighting. Let's see where we're at. Um, so let's enter the rendered view over here. Um, okay, so this has the floor material. The cube does not have the floor material. Let's add that. Uh, and you can see how dark that floor material is when there's no light on it. Um, you know, quite a bit darker than it actually appears in most of the shots. Um, now, I don't think we need this point lamp back here just because of the way we're kind of looking through. Um, we just don't have the same need for the, the backdrop. You know, that kind of natural vignette I talk about sometimes. But what I do want is some lighting, maybe maybe we change this to a disc light, and then we can use this. We need to get some light over here. Uh, it's just way too dark. So um, I think what I'll do is I'm just pressing R twice to kind of go into a free rotate, and let's try to get ourselves set up with just a nice um, kind of big wash of light for the scene. You know, maybe something like that. And I'm kind of thinking about what color that gray was in the background in my previous shots, and I want to sort of match that to a certain degree. And while I'm looking at it, I think this cube needs to get just a little bit of a little bit of its own bevel, which is way too big right there. Always a good idea to not have things perfectly sharp. Let's give this a couple more segments. Uh, this one, I think, yeah, that already's got a bevel because we used it from the uh, existing cube. So we've got a nice big wash of light here from this lamp. It's giving us a little bit of light on the bottom, giving the cube some light. Um, and then this lamp here, um, let's press Alt-R to point that downwards, reset the rotation. And I'm just gonna use that to get my, you know, kind of my classic highlight that I've been going for on that left side. So let's try just sort of moving this around until we get it right about where we want it. You know, honestly, I think something like that is looking 
pretty dandy. Let's see if we can maybe turn down the power a little bit. Our label's getting a little bit too washed out. And maybe we could even adjust the label color slightly if we wanted to. Bring the specular down maybe a little bit for this shot. Just so that shows a little better. Maybe we could even boost the contrast. Or maybe we just need less light. Maybe this just needs to be smaller. It's always a game, moving things around. I think that label looks okay. Let's see if we did add a little bit of brightness contrast. So contrast is gonna make that darker. I don't think we need that. Let's get rid of that. I think it looks okay. And we can always boost the colors a little bit in post. That's what they always say, right? Fix it in post. Post, by the way, is like a short term for post-production where people are tasked with fixing your lazy mistakes. So this is looking cool. A little bit dark up here though. I want I want the uh, I want this gray to be a pretty flat color. And the way I'm gonna kind of introduce some light there is with my reflector. So let's just move our reflector into place. And you can see, um, you know, if we hide that, you know, we don't have any light there, but Alt H to unhide it. Um, now it's basically just, it's, it's probably getting also from the scene, but from this light here, um, it's kind of hitting that white and we're getting just a nice little bit of bounce lighting. And even though we've got this ugly uh, black part here, we won't see that in the actual animation. So let's just kind of pan across, see what we got. And I'd say we're looking pretty good, to be honest. So the last little detail here, uh, we also did this in the previous animation, was just to add a little bit of depth of field. So I'm going to um, Shift S, snap my cursor there, and then add an empty, we'll call that a sphere, and then we'll just bring the size down. Now I think if I, I found out in that other one, if I rename this focus, I think that will, okay, so it actually took the focus 002 name. So it kept the other ones the same names, which is fine. doesn't really matter what those are called. As long as I can find them when I go over here, turn on depth of field and set the focus object. So now you can see as we move this around, if we move it down here, the wine's going to be in focus and we move it up here, the cube is going to be in focus. So I want this to start off kind of with that cube in focus. So we'll just kind of put it right around there, something like that. And that's at the beginning, we want it right there. So let's go ahead and insert keyframes for the location. Again, since I'm doing a linear animation, uh, I don't need to worry too much about having too many extra keyframes. Uh, and then down here at the end, we're gonna have it be here. And we actually want that to happen probably sooner. So let's go ahead and set the keyframe. So we'll have our focus right around there, insert keyframes but I don't want that transition to be happening the whole time. I kind of want it to be on the cube and then on those. So I want that to happen relatively quickly. So let's maybe, maybe it stays. So I could just drag this over, which would mean it basically is gonna, you know, before that there's no keyframe. So it's just gonna be using that keyframe. Um, so it stays there. And then kind of as soon as those bottles start to come into view is when I want it to shift down. So maybe a little bit sooner. Let's drag this over. And then by right about then, I want that focus to be all the way down there. So I'm gonna move those keyframes back. So now we've got this where it's focused on the cube and then quickly moves down to that. The cube becomes out of focus. And maybe that's a little bit overdone with the focus. Let's turn our f-stop up maybe quite a bit too. It's never a good idea to have things like crazy blurred unless they're just like insanely close, but if they're that close, you should probably just remove them from the shot. Um, so something like this, you can see, still see a semblance of that cube, but it's uh, it's not nearly as in focus as it was before. So I'm liking this shot. Maybe we kind of, there we go. Try to get a little bit more light on that side there. I think that's pretty good. Something like that. Okay, so I'm liking the way that looks. I think that's a really about it for this animation. I think we went through that quite a bit faster. Of course, um, play with the you know cropping of things. Uh, we probably would want some of these labels maybe spun around. 
so that we can get some little dirk details there, things like that. But make the adjustments as you please and just get it to a you know nice kind of composition that that helps with uh, whatever whatever you're working on. I assume it's a wine bottle, but I'm sure people are going to be doing other things. It'd be cool to see some other types of bottles, um, whatever type of bottle you want to make a render of, or you don't even have to do a bottle. You could use all these techniques to make a cell phone animation. And I would never have the heart to tell you that I have a tutorial on that, but it is outdated. So there's probably some, uh, some good new information in this that you could apply to whatever type of animation you want. Um, but we're going to wrap that up for this animation. What I'll do next is just go over uh, maybe a few details of how you would get this set up to actually render. Uh, we can you know, loosely touch on some rendering settings, but I just want to show you how we render out the frames and then how I would import those into a software like After Effects, for example.